So although this tree is beautiful, it's not doing us much good if we're not getting any figs off of it. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Thursday, January 11th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna cut down this big tree behind me. Maybe not all the way, but close to all the way. So this is something we've been talking about doing for quite a while just now finally getting around to it and i want to make sure i do it before this tree starts budding out again so let me tell you why we've got to cut most of it down so this big brown turkey fig tree is probably about close to 30 foot in diameter i don't know how old it is it was here when we moved here heck this thing could be older than i am now we've lived here for a little over 10 years now and up until about two years ago this tree gave us loads and loads of figs i'm talking about buckets and buckets of figs in the early summer every single year we could always count on this tree to give us plenty of figs to make jellies preserves stuff like that but over the last couple years the production on this tree has declined significantly and if we look up here towards the top it's pretty easy to tell why so you see all these limbs right here that have lichen all over them this is all old growth and we're not getting any new growth coming out of the top of the tree right here as i've told you before figs are made on new growth since we're not getting any new growth up here that's why we're not getting any figs so this happens more often than not with old old fig trees like this that have not been regularly pruned i hear stories all the time people say i've got a big fig tree in my yard it was here when i moved here and it's just not giving us anything anymore so i'm just going to cut it down but you don't have to scrap it completely and cut it all the way down you just need to do an aggressive pruning like we're going to do today the goal is there to promote more new growth get rid of some of this old growth that's not doing anything the more new growth that we can promote the more figs we'll get so although this tree is beautiful it's not doing us much good if we're not getting any figs off of it so the goal today is to remove all these big limbs that are just full of old growth not doing anything anymore i don't know how far i'm going to cut back these big logs some of them i may cut back to the dirt some of them i may leave a little bit of a stub now i did come in here with the hand pruners this past weekend and do a little bit of cutting on some of these younger limbs just so i could access this tree a little bit better just so i could work around it and I did save some of the better looking material from what I cut this past weekend just to have some backup cuttings. So cut them in short little pieces here, give them a little hydrogen peroxide bath, clean them off a little bit, and then wax the ends to kind of seal those, keep any moisture from being lost out there. I think I ended up with three or four of these little bins like this, and I've got them in the fridge underneath the barn. I can start them whenever I want to once we get some more room in the greenhouse. Now obviously we're going to need more than some hand pruners and some loppers to do what we need to do here today. So I've got an extremely large heavy duty chainsaw that I'm going to use to start cutting on this tree. Let me show you what I've got here. Just kidding. <laughs> this is my old Roby battery powered chainsaw. I actually don't own a gas powered chainsaw. I don't use a chainsaw enough to justify a big one. This one right here is good for just cutting a few things at a time. I've got several batteries charged up in the house there. So hopefully I have enough juice to, you know, get this tree cut pretty significantly there. These things actually work pretty good and I like them because they crank up every single time. So I'm going to go tighten up my chain and start cutting and I'll be sure to stop once we make a little progress and show you how it's coming along. All right, so about 15 minutes later, as you can see behind me, we've made some pretty decent progress. Still on my first chainsaw battery. And no injuries thus far. Let's take a closer look. Now, it might have been a little safer to cut these big limbs in pieces as opposed to just cutting the whole thing at one time. But I was able to get in there pretty good and cut them so they fell away from me and not towards me. And we're gonna have to cut these into smaller pieces before i can drag them to the burn pile i just was barely able to flip them out of the way gonna need them a lot lighter before i can drag them any distance 
But anyways, now you can see how I cut off the tops of all of those older, large limbs that weren't giving us any new growth. Now, we could leave it like this if we wanted to. This would certainly be better than it was. I want to clean this up a little bit. It looks a little scraggly. I think we can get it a little neater. But now that we can work around this tree a lot better, we can make some decisions as far as what we're going to keep and what we're going to remove. If we look here in the center, you'll notice those up there. I didn't remove those because those look pretty good. And I can look at the bud tips and tell they're putting on some new growth. So that's what I want to keep right there. That more vigorous looking fig growth. I think I just want to get rid of all these old logs here. They're just kind of in the way. So we want to preserve some of that stuff that looks a little more alive. So I'm going to get the old Ryobi crank back up. We're going to do some more hacking here and I'll give you an update in a few minutes. All right, that's enough chainsawing for one day. I'm on my last battery here, which tells me it's time to quit. These little batteries don't last near as long as those big batteries do. Of course that makes sense right but uh these little ryobi chainsaws pretty nifty little tools you can get a lot done with one of these things and here's the finished product so we went from that big old sprawling fig tree to just this right here we cut all that stuff off of it now i had to kind of determine which one of these bigger limbs i was going to leave and which one i was going to cut and i had a lot to do with which ones were accessible and which weren't some of them had a good bit of rot in them so i tried to cut those all the way back I could only get so close with some of them just the way this tree is the ones that look pretty good look like the wood was still good I cut those right above some new growth there hopefully that will fuel some nice growth next year and uh, we'll be on our way to getting back to some normal production on this tree now I should mention I'm not completely done yet I still need to get my loppers and come in here and clean this up a little bit all this stuff right here this not too old growth i'm gonna end up just pruning that like we do all our other trees in the orchard back there so uh, probably about 30 more minutes worth of work and we'll be done with this baby and i think for these limbs here there's going to be no point in trying to stack all these on my burn pile because they're not going to stack very good my burn pile it's got a nice pile of dead stuff on it right now so i think what i'll do once it dries up a little bit is just light my fire get some good coals going there once this stuff dries out a little bit more just haul a limb at a time to my burn pile and just gonna have to burn it slow one afternoon there's no way i can stack all this stuff here without a tractor or something to smush it down now before we go, I want to try and do something really cool with this right here. I saved this piece because it looked pretty good. My buddy Matthew up in Athens told me when I cut this thing down that I should save a piece and try to root one of these logs right here. I've seen a guy named Mike Kincaid on YouTube do it, so I figured I'd give it a try too. Alright, this may or may not work, but I figure it's worth a shot and it'll be fun to try. So the reason I picked this log and cut this log specifically for this purpose was because it had some growth here at the top instead of just picking a blank log and hoping it sprouts out some new growth. This might give us a better chance here. I had a little bowl of hot wax in my office there. Went ahead and poured it over the top here. Hopefully seal that off a little bit. Keep that from drying out. Wish I would have had more wax, but I poured everything I had on the top there. So now we just need to work on the bottom a little bit and get it in this pot. So I don't know that it matters a whole lot because I haven't found it matters much when I'm doing all my little cuttings inside the greenhouse. But for good measure, went ahead and shaved a little bit of the bark off there with my knife. And so now what we need to do is go ahead and get us a little soil in our pot. Just got some pro mix here. Just going to put a little bit in the bottom there and kind of seat our big log down in that. that should work then i'm going to put some rooting hormone on the bottom here before i do that i need to wet it make sure it sticks good so i got some water here wet the bottom of that real good there i don't really know a good way to do this i got some rooting hormone left over from this year and I usually don't save this stuff from year to year. I start working with a new can each year. So if I spill a little bit, no big deal. Sprinkle that on the bottom there. 
make a mess. All right, now we'll stick this down in our pot here. Move that out of the way and start putting some dirt around it. I'm gonna try to get it centered up here. It's really a two-man job, but we'll make it work. This also might work better if this Pro Mix was a little moist, but we'll get it wet here shortly once we get everything in place. Pack it down there so our log stays upright. Get some over here on this side and get it packed in. All right. I think that there will work. Now, will it actually make a new fig tree or not? I am not sure, but I think it's going to give us a pretty good chance. So this is the biggest fig cutting by far that I've ever tried to propagate. And I'll be sure to keep you all updated if something actually happens with this and it doesn't just rot in this pot. But anyways, hope you enjoyed seeing how we tackled that big fig tree that had stopped producing for us. As I always tell you, fig trees are tough. Even if we had one of those big steel chainsaws with the huge bars on it and we cut that rascal level with the ground, it would still grow back. It's hard to kill a fig tree once it's established in the ground. So if you've got an old tree like that and maybe it's taking up too much space or it's you know, not producing well for you anymore, don't be scared to get your Ryobi chainsaw out and go to town. And as always, you can see all the fig varieties that we'll have available soon on our website at LazyDogFarm.com. And if you want to see fig pruning on a little smaller scale, maybe your trees aren't quite that big, watch this video right here. We'll show you how we prune one-year-old trees and then four- and five-year-old trees. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.